Hey, welcome back. My name is Al. Today we're gonna make this little pawn jump. If you don't have a pawn, use a cube, use a cylinder, whatever. Go Google how to make one of these things, not a problem. So I am gonna select this and we're just gonna make it jump and skip over one of these tiles. Now I'm gonna do this the wrong way first, just to kind of show you. Um, well, not the wrong way, just very, very basic. Okay, so I'm on frame one. I have the object selected. I'm gonna press S because that is where I would like this guy to start. Remember the process is go to a new frame. I'm gonna pick 10, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm gonna press W and then I'm gonna scooch him over and then I'm gonna press S again. So he is sliding from point A to point B. All right, super easy. Uh, let's make this, since we know how to adjust, I'm gonna hold shift, left click and drag on my timeline to highlight that keyframe and then use the middle arrows. I can left click and drag and I'm gonna drag it to 24. Remember period and comma, well, it's supposed to work. I don't know exactly why mine's not working. Yeah, whatever. Period and comma is supposed to bounce between the frames. So I've got frame one and then 24. And that means that one second is how long that slide takes. Now, I said we wanted him to jump. So this isn't quite what I want. So I'm going to go somewhere in between. I'm going to lift him up and then I'm going to press S. So now I have that jump. Awesome, right? You could use this uh, to block out. You could use this for your whole animation. But let's make this a little bit more awesome because that's kind of boring. Honestly, there's some 12 principles of animation that we don't have here that we can add. I'm not gonna dive deep into the 12 principles in this video, that'll be a later video. So we've got that jump and I'm gonna make this one better. So some of those things that we could do to make this better. Maybe we want to have him rotate back like on this back, uh, back section. In order to do that, if I were just to rotate, Right, he's kind of punching through. So what I can do is I can kind of change where that pivot point is. But in this example, you only want to do it once. You're not going to do this multiple different times. So I'm going to hold D as in Delta, grab that arrow, pull it back. I'm just going to place it up here. So D, I could hold V if I want, but right up there and over. Let's do like that. Now that's not perfect. It's actually not great. Let's go down some more. Let's do it how we're supposed to. We're gonna move this whole thing down and pretend like that little base isn't there. So D, let's move this over to there. Okay, so now I have this decent pivot point where he kind of looks like he's rotating back on that thing. So I'm gonna do the same process. Frame one, press S. Let's go to frame 24. I am going to scooch him over, press S. Everything's the same there. Uh, I don't really care. I guess it's frame 12, perfect. I was on it. Let's move him up, press S. Okay, we have basically the same thing. But let's go through and make this a little more awesome. So instead of him immediately jumping, what we can do is give him some anticipation. So what I'm gonna do is right click that keyframe on frame one, go to copy, and then I'm just gonna go to frame five, right click, paste, paste. Now, I copied this to here, which means nothing's gonna happen. And what that allows me to do is it gives me some space to actually have something different happen. So I'm gonna go to frame five, let's rotate him back and press S. So now he doesn't start like this one does and start jumping. He's actually leaning back and then he jumps. This is a little quick. Let's talk about timing right now. So if I press play, this anticipation is just way too quick. The anticipation is him, is the action before the action. So it's preparing the audience eyes for something that's about to happen. So this jump, it's like in real life. If I bend down, then I can jump. I can't just jump. So this is him bending down. He's just rearing back. So I'm gonna grab all of these, scooch them over. So now I have this really exaggerated kind of cocking back. And then he lunges forward and jumps. Okay, looking good. Let's see, how can we fix this? I really don't like how he's not leading with his head. He's not doing something like uh, like this. If you go out to Google, type in jump animation, essentially this, right? And this one, he's standing, he squashes down, he then stretches up, he's kind of leading with his head and then he's gonna land on his feet, squash, good to go. So we're gonna do something like that, except instead of squashing down, he's gonna be rearing back and then he's gonna be launching forward with his head and arms kind of leading the way, and then he's gonna land on his feet. Although we don't have arms and legs, all the principles still apply. So let's see, that looks good. Somewhere before he starts moving up, we need to have him kind of rotated along 
uh, the front of him to be pointed that way. So I'm gonna make this easy on myself. So I'm gonna come, let's just spread these out some more. Hold shift, left click and drag. Now I got more room, okay? So I'm gonna come here, let's do the same thing. Let's right click, copy, lots of ways to do the same thing. Right click, paste. So now nothing's happening. Then I can repose this guy. I'm gonna keep the pivot point here. If you change the pivot point, if you were to move it to this other side, it's gonna screw them up. Uh, I'll show you, I'm just kind of eyeballing this to the geometry, penetrating the ground right there. When I got what I think is good, press S. So now he goes like this, and then he kind of goes like that. That's not my favorite. So what I'm gonna do is somewhere in between, I'm gonna go ahead and scooch him down, press S, see what that looks like. That feels a little bit better. That's not bad. It's not perfect, but hey. And now his head is facing that way. Let's push him a little bit further. Press S, and then I'm gonna have to move him up. Actually, let's change that to world. Rear and back, and now he's pointed that way, and then, great, and then he jumps. So obviously the timing here is way off, but he's headed this direction. So I really want this to be something similar. I'm gonna rotate him that way. Maybe bring him back slightly. Press S, so now he's heading that direction. See how he goes straight up way too much. So I am actually going to come somewhere here. Let's push him further this way. Press S. There, that's a little better. Not too bad, but somewhere here-ish, we want him to be landing on his heels, and that's gonna give me something that mimics this. Head back the other way, land on his heels. So I'm going to copy this keyframe. Let's bounce back a little bit, paste that keyframe, because once again, nothing's gonna happen because those are the same frames. Now I'm gonna rotate him this way and press S. So this is what I get. He rears back, launches forward, lands, and then choo. So this is called follow through or overlapping action. This would be instead of just this object going and stopping, we would like it to settle this way, like rotate and then settle back to normal. So we're gonna go a few frames. I'm gonna pick three. I'm gonna rotate him slightly and then I'm gonna move him up. Press S. So he rotates a little bit. One, two, three, let's go that way. So let's grab this frame, copy, right click, paste. Now we're back to normal. So all that did was just add a little bit of wobble. It's not perfect. I would wanna go through here and fix this. And honestly, let's do that now. So I really hate the beginning of this. Let's grab this guy. That looks good, anticipation. And then from here to there, he doesn't look like he's moving forward enough and he's not. So if we pay attention to where that piece should be, uh, like jumping off of, it's kind of here, and you'll look, that piece goes back. So I really need that to be further forward right here. So I'm gonna push that forward, press S, and an easy way is like with your left hand or your right hand, whatever, a post-it note on your computer screen, mark right here, and then you'd be able to see if it's moving forward. If I had period and comma, that would help me a lot. So I think it still needs to go over just a little bit more. Press S. That feels not perfect, but better. See how in between this frame and this frame, looks like it's just rotating off of that, right? That looks better. And then this is too slow, this part. So we're gonna grab all those with shift. We're gonna scooch it back that way. Let's press play. Not too bad. Really, if I wanted to fix this, uh, I would fix the arc, because currently this is super straight. It goes from here to here to kind of straight down. So let's continue this arc that way. Press S. We're just gonna scooch this over, press S. Copy that frame, paste that one. Let's scooch this one over, see how we did there. So we got that one, we need to come forward.
I was just eyeballing that. So you'll be able to take more time with that. And then from point A to point B. So this is very straight from this point to the high point. So we could come somewhere in between and round that out a little. So I moved them over and up and just I'm just going to see what that feels like. Not quite where I want it. Let's go up some. There we go. And then from the top here to here, it's way too straight. I'm going to have him come down and out maybe. There we go. That feels pretty good. So let's take a look at a different example in my channel box. I've got this one. Let's see how I did. There, this one's a little bit less janky. So I press play. There we go. So he has the anticipation rearing back. He launches forward somewhere midair. He rotates, comes down, and then settles into position. So we took a very boring animation of this jump. Let's hide that one. Just focus on this back one. Very boring, right? We added three principles of animation. One of them was rearing back. The other, uh, we just kind of posed it a little bit better. We added arc to our jump. We then added follow through and overlapping action. So all of that can help push and tell a better story. This looks super boring and robotic. And this one looks like it's got a little bit more life and then even more so. This guy looks like it's its own character that's moving around. So take those into consideration whenever you are animating.